Hello, welcome back to another episode of Bandit Fishing UK. And today I'm out chasing conga. Probably my favorite fish to catch. Big, aggressive, and they don't half pull back when you get a decent one on. So fishing on Sully Island, it's a rough ground mark. And low tide is about 20 past eight, so it just coincides with, um, with a light dropping as well tonight, which is a good thing. Hopefully we'll get some fish just as the light is uh, the light is dipping away. But bait wise today I've got some bluey mackerel, what else? Herring and uh, some old white dinner we've had in the freezer for a little while. So they're gonna go out, chop and change, and hopefully pick up some fish. Put out some uh, put out my big rods today as well, the compressor super sports. Don't use these enough if I'm being honest, it's a fantastic rod, a lot of backbone, so if I hook something big today, that's going to have the uh, the power and beef to get it in for me. Fingers crossed we'll get some fish for you, we'll be back shortly. So rig wise today, um, just gone for straightforward pulleys, nothing special about them. Uh... Oh, bite, bite, bite. I said it's not big, I lied, right? I didn't lie, it's not a massive fish, but what timing that was then, eh? Ah, see if I can, oh he's lively, very lively still, oh, ah. so that's a six pound, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's a five or six pound fish. It's not a bad first fish, first chuck. Mackerel and, oh, surprise, surprise, mackerel and herring. <laughs> Great start. Look there, as I was just trying to go through there in the rig, simple pulley. This one, three foot. And I've got another one that's, um, that's, uh, what's that? 18 inches. So we're a two and a half foot, sorry, not three foot, the two and a half foot and a foot and a half. Standard pulley with our little stop knot system. And as you can see, that's where that fish hooked itself straight away. Stop knot, bang, only downside. That didn't release, that's very rare for these clips. 
So that's why I had to pull that out then. That's why I struggled to get it off first of all. But great start on your first cast. Let's see if there's any biggers about. Something small on you, you tap in, but then if it is a fish, it's very small, it could be a rocklin. Something like that, maybe. Definitely a fish, I'd say. Yeah, it's a fish. Cast two fish, slightly smaller than the, uh, than the first one. Plenty of eels about those, so was a good sign. Fingers crossed I can get into some bigger ones. Just going to show you the use of a tea bar. A lot of people use pliers or, or whatnot, but tea bars, I need a new one, it's snapped. <laughs> the tea bar is a fantastic bit of kit, especially when it comes to eels and dogs. Got a circle there, all you've got to do is pop that onto the line, make it work it down to the corner of the hook, and then use a fish's weight just to pop the hook out. Obviously, that's harder because it's a small fish, but there, easy job done. Fish nicely, nicely unhooked, and let's just chuck, chuck them back. Job done. Just going to talk through these rigs again. Um, because obviously that fish interrupted me earlier on. And when I was unhooking it and showed it to the camera, I don't really think I did went through my uh, my rigs very well. So simple pulleys, like you've seen before, with a fixed panel, um, size 3 Sakuma Mantas. Because we're fishing rough ground, the manta is springy, so it will spring out. You will get a, if your hook gets caught, you can bend them out. So that's the reason I use those. They don't bend out on fish. I've had some good fish on them and I've got a lot of faith in them. Then, snoods are 70 pounds. That should be plenty for these fish. Fingers crossed they don't get bitten off tonight because I'll be absolutely devastated if I do. Then we've got the normal swivel, beads, and our stopper. That's why these fish are getting self-hooked. They're feeling the bait and they're getting hooked. They haven't got a chance to really take it, take it deep because it hits that stopper, they hook themselves, and then when you're bringing them in, that stopper will slide down for the, and your pulley will be acting as normal. Weak link, that's the clip that I've used, showed it a couple of times before, very simple. And then 15 pounds um, rotten bottom with a couple of granny knots in it as well. My main line is just shy of 30 pounds. Um, so that's plenty. Then for grippers, got for six ounce Namix weights. Now, congas can be finicky. They are big predaceous fish and they do, they have got a big mouth and people think they'll eat any, everything. But they can be very finicky at times. So 
you've got to really find out what they want in sort of bait sizes. So I'm alternating, I've got two rods going. So I put in ones out with a smaller bait, two and a half, two and a half inches. And then the other ones, these whole white, oh, snapped it. But <laughs> okay then, a head of a white in. So it's a big bait that is for the conga or for any fish really, but it's a bigger bait. And then they might be in a mood for something bigger. You never know, you've just got to trial and error and work it out. So I'm going to get this one on my next rig and send it out and see if I can entice a bigger fish. Black line on this right rod. Yeah. Just trying to feel the fish. this quick He's wedged himself in that gap. Can't get him out. He's wedged himself. If I can get it out, I'll, um, <laughs> I'll bring him back and show you him in a bit. He decided to swim out for me. It's another reasonable eel. It's not massive, but again, another decent fish. As night fell, the fish uh, just, just picked up this one. So I had a little switch as well. I had, I had two or three casts with, a, with that 18 inch pulley. And I just didn't get any interest from them. The first two fish I had were felt to the longer one. So I've switched all my rigs to the longer one now. This had been out a couple of seconds and uh, lo and behold, it worked. So all four rigs on the 30 inch, two and a half pulley now. And let's see if we can get some bigger ones. Another slack line on this right rod.
fish is swimming with it, you can feel it moving. That's what you got to contend with. I want some bigger fish. For the bigger fish, you got to get there before these do. So, get another bait out there and get it going again. A good stamp of fish. There's a lot of fish this sort of size. Oh, angry. A lot of fish this size about. I've had whiting out there, I've left whiting for maybe 45 minutes, even an hour, not a touch. That's, I changed the mackerel and herring, and they're taking that in minutes. So I might even go down to one rod, try and fish hard one rod, get through a lot of these, just to get a bigger fish. But it's nice to catch some at least, even if they're not, not a biggest in the world. And another one. It must be absolutely crawling with them out there. This might be the biggest of the day. No, they're not coming big. Oh, the first one and this one are probably a very similar size. Uh, about, ah, what's that? Five or six, I'm guessing. Not a massive fish, but decent. Um, a couple of ways of handling eels. They are slimy, nasty things, aggressive, they do shake around. But you have got like the bigger ones, especially if you can't grab it like this, the bigger ones, you've got the gills, you can slip just about just by the peck. Oh. Just by the pectoral there. By the, wow, see, nasty. You don't like it. You're easier just to. Uh, twist it and can't do anything with it. It's easier just to grab it. But they have got the gills there, so the bigger ones you can slip your finger into them to hold them. But, lovely. Massive height on them. See if I can get one more, and then I'll probably be the end for the night. I'm probably on, I know I've lost count, eight or nine eels already now tonight. So maybe one more, and we'll call it a night then. So I'm just going to show you how I'm cut, cutting up these white in uh, for bait. I haven't managed to catch anything on them, but nevertheless, I'll show you anyway. So all I'm doing is cutting them on a diagonal there to get rid of the tail. And then you've got an option, if you've got big enough hooks, you can put that as a bait. Because they've got quite small hooks in a fixed panel on a, on these, I'm just chopping them just behind there to expose some of the guts. And then sort of just squashing it a bit to make it a bit longer, sort of thinner and longer. When you're fishing rough ground, can you imagine a, a bait falling through the water and it's going to either fall that side or that side. So what I tend to do if I'm using a bait like this, is to put it through the back. Just put it both through the back, like that. And then the likelihood is, you could still get snagged, but you are incre you're sort of increasing your chances of not. So pop them like that, and you can see, Hopefully it fall and you're not your snag your hook points are not gonna get snagged. Then simply bind it on with the elastic. You see all the guts and everything coming out there. And that's what these uh, and that's what Conga really enjoy, all these guts and bloods and smells. You put all the elastic on, 
find that on there. So then you've got two lovely hook points. And it's not that big a bait when you think of it. That's, that's, that white thing was probably, I don't know, 25 centimeters, something like that, long. And all of a sudden you end up with a prime bait. So chuck this one out for my last cast. Let's see if I can get something. my final fish of the session I really lost count of how many fish I've had I want to say 10 eels a couple this size a couple about I don't know three maybe four and then the two biggest ones maybe go maybe push in six be like five and a half six I would have said but cracking I've cut this short it's only nine o'clock now I was gonna fish until about ten but I've had my fill today, to be honest. I've had a, caught an, enough fish. They're still biked in, so I don't know. One of those. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for the support we've had from the channel so far. We are near the thousand subscriber mark, which is absolutely fantastic. Me and Phil are over the moon with that. And uh, by the time this is released, you never know. We might actually be over it. So thanks for the support you've given us. Um, tight lines for everyone out there. And we'll catch you again soon. Thank you.